the Christian journey is a journey of faith. Faith means believing the unseen. Faith means believing the word to be true. Faith means seeing God the way he is. Even though your situation does not give you that opportunity. If your situation gives you the opportunity to see God the way he is, then you don't need faith. You don't need faith. To believe God means to believe his word. To believe his word means to believe in the power and the ability of God. To believe in God means to believe in his word. And to believe in his word means to believe in the ability and power of God. The unseen ability and power of God. To see the power and the ability of God is to stay in faith. I take that again. To believe in God means to believe in his word. To believe in his word means to believe in the ability and the power of God. And to believe in the ability and power of God means to stay in faith. So it's a faith journey. To stay in faith. We want to look at what I mean complete in him. <clears throat> what I give you is just something to boost your mind, your faith, your, your unseen self. And to blow it bigger, a little bit bigger. So that you can take in all that God has prepared for you today. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter number 1 verse 30. First Corinthians 1 30. It says, but of him... Are you in Christ Jesus? Who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. But of him are you in Christ Jesus? Give me the amplifier and let's see that first line. But it is from him, God, that you have your life in Christ Jesus. Okay, that's better. King James said, But of him, but of him are you in Christ Jesus. But of God are we in Christ Jesus. So without God, we cannot be in Christ. The English is not for Christ, but in Christ. But of God are we in Christ Jesus. Colossians 1.13 Colossians 1.13 Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So he did it. He started it. He did it. He finished it. He brought us out of darkness and translated us, took us straight into the kingdom of his dear son. So of him are we in Christ Jesus? It's of his making that we're in Christ Jesus. Somebody hear me. Give us that first Corinthians 1 30 again in King James. <clears throat> but of him are we in Christ Jesus. Now the second I said, Who of God is made unto us? Who of God is made unto us? Now there are a lot of things written there, but let's take them one by one. Who of God? Jesus Christ is made unto us. I want you to open your mind and receive something here. But of him are we in Christ Jesus. Who of God. Okay, let me put it like that. But of God are we in Christ Jesus. He made us. Who of God. Ah, yeah. Did you see the construction there? Who of God. Christ Jesus is made unto us. So. We were, God brought us out from darkness and put us in the kingdom of his dear son for a purpose. The purpose here is this. 
that we have been made unto God by Jesus Christ. Number one, wisdom. Wisdom. The ability to take in this word, the ability to take in the word is what we are after. The Christian journey is a journey that begins from resurrection. Until you come to the understanding that your journey begins from his resurrection, you may be missing a lot. What I discuss with you every time <clears throat> is what I tell people when I come in contact with people like, like in the village, I was telling some pastors, you people are just busy criticizing the your followers and preaching sin consciousness and condemnation and all of that. So you you preach you are just preaching the road to the cross. You have not reached the cross yet. Don't you hear the language cross? Cross means to to move from one place to another. Eh? All of that you are preaching stopped at the cross. But for us to cross the cross means to walk in the resurrection. And these are the words of resurrection. <clears throat> Who of God, Jesus Christ, is made unto me. Number one, wisdom. Listen to me. There are things you struggle for. There are earthly wisdom. There are heavenly wisdom. There are natural wisdom. There are wisdom in so many areas. But here the Bible said, who of God, Jesus Christ, is made unto me, number one, wisdom, Colossians 2, 3. Wisdom. See what the Bible is saying. In whom, that is in Jesus, I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus, I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And here is saying that of God, Jesus Christ is made unto me wisdom. So I am, I am the wisdom of God in Christ. The whole totality of wisdom in Christ is in me. I am made to be the wisdom of God in Christ. In Christ, I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So what are you looking for? What kind of wisdom are you looking for in the world? They are buried in Christ. And of God, Jesus Christ has made my wisdom. Give me the amplifier on Colossians 2, 3. In Him, all the treasures of divine wisdom comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God. Somebody hearing me. And all the riches of spiritual knowledge and enlightenment are stored up and they lie hidden in Christ. And this same Christ is made my wisdom. Say after me, Christ is my wisdom. <coughs> I am the wisdom of God in Christ. I am wiser as Christ is my wisdom. I am sharp and accurate as Christ is my wisdom. He is not my source, but He is my wisdom. I am wise. I cannot fail. I am wise. I cannot be foolish because Christ is my wisdom. Now these are the things that you are supposed to be claiming and walking in them. These are words of resurrection. These are not words before the cross. They are words after the cross. When you cross the cross, you will come into situations like this. God prepared the cross for you to cross over into this life. Christ is my wisdom. I, I can't afford to be foolish. Christ is my wisdom. 
I cannot fail in my exams. Christ is my wisdom. I cannot lack thinking something good. Christ is my wisdom. Now, you are, until you say them, they can't work for you. They are not meant to be written letters. They are meant to be spoken words. Keep speaking them. That's why you are a, you are a Christian. Christ is my wisdom. Number two. Who of God, Jesus Christ, is made unto me it was that portion. Play with First Corinthians one thirty. Keep playing with it. Who of God is made unto me? We finish wisdom. What do we see next? Righteousness. Who of God? Christ is made unto me righteousness. Oh, what a wonderful uh, 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 word is this! So. Christ is my righteousness. Christ is my righteousness. Christ is my righteousness. Give me Romans 10, 3. Far from number 1. Romans 10, 1 to 3. Quickly, we're talking about righteousness. I want to point you something here. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for you is that you might be saved. But you are saved. You are born again. Give me verse 2. For I bear you record that you have a zeal of God. But not according to knowledge. That's where the problem is. You come to church seriously and do everything you know. What do the board do? You lack knowledge. What is the knowledge? Verse 3. For you being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish your own righteousness, you have not submitted yourself unto the righteousness of God. It's QED. That is no additional subtraction. So Christ is my righteousness. So if Christ is your righteousness, stop putting laws for yourself. Stop bargaining with God. God, if you do this for me, I will do like this. It's a covenant. What kind of covenant is that? What kind of covenant is that? Uh, what is that his name? That lady, Mercy Ben Sika. I had a chat with her. You know the husband is missing. Ha. Ah. Since 2017, customs, they went out for sea patrol. And three of them, only one came back. The rest, to today, the cigar has not been seen. And customers refuse to say anything, whether he's dead or not. The salaries can't come to her and all of that. Now, why am I bringing that story? They asked her to take customs to court to either produce your husband or she said she had a covenant with God that she would never take anybody to court uh, they, we stopped there <laughs> I said look at you <laughs> you are ignorant of the righteousness of God you keep fixing laws for yourself and so she is suffering till today no, I was with her and she came to give me that, those small, small envelopes I was there. One of the envelopes was the first preaching I did. I see three years ago or four years ago. She was still having it. I was there when somebody in the customs office from Abuja called her and said the office is waiting for her to confirm that her husband is dead right before me. I said, How will I confirm that my husband is dead? He, he was walking with you until that incident happened. You people have not told me where my husband is. And he said, hey, if, if she confirmed, then they will give her maybe her entitlement or whatever. She said, no, she can't claim the husband is dead. It is you that will tell us. In worry. Now Abuja called and so I got to know the story. But my own anger is that they said, take the people, cause them to court. Maybe they will, they will call up the case and settle. You say you had a covenant with God that you will not take anybody to court. I told her, as you are, you are 
talking very righteously and all that. You have the zeal of God, but you lack nothing. What are they to go? I'm coming up with him. Covenant has ended at the cross. The purpose of the cross is to establish a new covenant. Why are you establishing your own again? That's what Paul is saying. Give me that verse three again. Let me tell some people. You keep putting laws for yourself. For you being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish your own righteousness, have not submitted yourself unto the righteousness of God. You are still making laws for yourself. God, if you give me a male child, I will dedicate him to you. He will be a servant. And when God gave you a new child, you kept him in your house. So are you, doing, are, are you obeying the covenant? In fact, to start with God is not in your covenant. Whatever you do, that is your business. Paul is crying for you this morning. But here now he said, Who of God, Jesus Christ, is made unto me what? Call it what you are afraid. Is made unto me what? Many people, are, their, their lips are too heavy to say righteousness. Because you are crowded with sin consciousness. You are crowded with, I have done this wrong, I have done that wrong. So you can't claim what God is making you to be. He knew you are a sinner. That's why he has made Christ to be your righteousness. And yet you are running away from him. Somebody say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Let me tell you the meaning of righteousness. Give me amplified. Making me upright and putting me no, 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 not this one, not this one. Go back to 1 Corinthians 1.30. The Amplified. Wisdom of God. Now, revealed, wisdom means revealed to us a knowledge of the divine plan of salvation previously hidden. Manifesting itself as what our righteousness. Righteousness means thus making me upright and putting me in right standing with God. This is called righteousness. It is not you walking yourself to be upright with God. Christ is, has made you to be upright with God. Making you stand right with God. That is righteousness. It's not committing sin or not committing sin. If not, many of you will not make... You will not even see the gate of heaven because you are lying on the telephone every day, every day. So how will you make it? Liar. As you are talking, you are Christian. You are a liar. You are, a liar. You are, a liar. You are still lying. Huh? Eh? So one angel should just appear and hit you with the slay them on your head. Boy, you go off. No, we will not die like that. That's why he's made our righteousness. God is not seeing you. God is seeing Christ. You are in Christ. Somebody hear me. Say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Christ is my righteousness. I am in right standing with God. I am made righteous. Say it again, I'm made righteous. Say it again, I'm made righteous. Give me that portion again. Let's see number three. Who of God? King James, King James, go back. Who of God? Christ is made unto me. What again? Sanctification. Listen to me very carefully. Sanctification is the key word. Is the key word. You don't get sanctified because of fasting. You don't get sanctified because you are keeping the laws. Already you are out of it. Because Christ is the end of the law. So going to establish new laws for yourself, you are on your own. Sanctification. First Corinthians six eleven. First Corinthians six eleven. And such were some of you. But you are washed. But you are sanctified. But you are justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And by the spirit of our God. You are sanctified. Give me amplified on it. You are sanctified. And such some of you were. Uh, once. Were means once. But now you are washed. Clean. Purified by a complete atonement for sin and made free from the guilt of sin. Hear me! This is what is called sanctification. Christ did all that for you to sanctify you. Amplify call it consecrate, consecration. And you were consecrated, set apart, hallowed. 
can still go on to that you are justified, pronounced righteous by trusting in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit of our God. No mention of self-ability or self-contribution. You don't contribute anything. Say with me, Jesus is my sanctification. I am sanctified before God in Christ. I am sanctified clean. I am made free from the guilt of sin. I am set apart unto God in Christ. Let's take the last one quickly. Who of God? Christ is made unto me. What do we have? Call it well. Redemption. Who of God? Christ is made unto me. Redemption. So Christ is my redemption. Now let's look at Romans 3 24. Romans 3 24 quickly. Romans 3 24. Being justified freely. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption. That is in Christ Jesus. So why am I walking? Without being dead. I am justified freely. By the redemption. He redeemed me. Do you understand the meaning of redemption? He bought me over. The cost of his blood. Was the cost of my freedom. I am justified. Give me Ephesians 1, 7. In whom, that is in Christ, we have redemption. I have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Let this get into your mind. Stop condemning and crucifying yourself. Who among you that has an earthly father, if you offend him and you can't go to him to say you're sorry, even when your father has forgiven, you are carrying the guilt on you. Everywhere you go, you are even telling people, I offended my father, I offended my father. Meanwhile, your father has forgiven you. If the prodigal son is, had behaved the way you are behaving, he wouldn't have inherited the second chance. He came back and the father forgave him. He said, before you, you started coming, I know. And I have prepared this for you. That's how we are. So why are you going back to that? Are you a pig? Until you allow this New Testament to get into your brain, you can't make it. Can you imagine just one verse? It's taking all our time. That's how we study. You keep pouncing on it, keep saying it. And the thing is getting into the system. Keep saying it. If you don't say it, it won't go in. And if it does not go in, it will not produce the result. This Bible is not for fun, ladies and gentlemen. It's for our use. Christ is my redemption. I have my redemption in Christ. I am redeemed by God in Christ. I have full redemption from sin and guilt. That's who I am today. I am what the word says I am. I'm wiser. I'm righteous. I'm sanctified. I am, I am redeemed. Give God praise. Just stand on your feet and give God praise. Just talk to him. You have just been made clear. He has told you who you are. The wisdom, the righteousness, the sanctification, and the redemption. You are redeemed. You are sanctified. You are wiser. Wiser than before you came into this place. Christ is your wisdom. 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 Come, come here. Christ is your wisdom. Hallelujah.